So we mentioned food viscosity, which is again, um, sort of how, how thick um, our foods are. Now, the viscosity of something is known to impact um, uh, how filling it is. So foods with high viscosity, so like quite thick and solid, things like chicken breast, um, they tend to um, require more chewing and basically slows the rate of ingestion. Something less viscous could be like egg white, we basically need less chewing um, and the rate of ingestion can be quite fast. Um, foods with high viscosity which require chewing, that increases the exposure time to the oral cavity, uh, which we just said um, enhances satiety further. Um, and I think this is probably very similar to, to um, as we said, why solid foods um, can be more satiating for liquids, because basically when you're consuming liquid calories, the, ex the, the exposure time um, to the oral cavity is very short. Um, additional research has also shown that there is a positive association between the calories consumed in liquids, mousses, yogurts uh, with weight gain. So what that means is the more calories people consume from liquids, mousses and yogurts, things that aren't very viscous, uh, the higher their chance of consuming more calories leading to weight gain. So a couple of cool studies, um, three, three cool studies actually, um, which highlight this point. Um, in one study, they gave participants two chocolate puddings that had the exact same amount of calories and macros, but they thickened one of them. Um, I, I guess they, they would have just had to whip it or, or something like that. Um, because it was thicker, it reduced the eating rate, so basically the time of ingestion, and that led to better satiety compared to um, when they just ate the non-thickened version. Uh, they replicated this same finding uh, using a milkshake. So basically they, they took a milkshake and then they just made it thicker with no extra calories um, and the thicker version was more filling. Uh, and then just finally, um, with a yogurt smoothie, they made it thicker and creamier. I don't know how they made it creamier with no extra calories, but they did. Um, when they consumed the thicker version at breakfast, it caused them to consume less calories at lunch um, compared to when they consumed the non-thickened and non-creamed uh, version. So chewing, um, what sort of role does chewing have on our satiety response? Um, now, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure some people can relate to being on contest prep or being in sort of the final stages of a fat loss phase and just basically inhaling uh, some of your meals when you're really hungry and about six mouthfuls um, that's probably not a great idea um, when you're in a fat loss phase so in this 2011 study they provided the participants with an unlimited pesto pasta lunch on three occasions so they could eat as much as they wanted but on the first occasion they had to chew each mouthful 10 times before they could swallow on the second occasion they had to chew 35 times before they swallowed and on the third occasion, they could just chew as much as they wanted. Now, during the high chew condition, so when they had to chew 35 times each mouthful, participants ate significantly less than the other two conditions, but they still felt just as much satisfied or satiated. So if you're in the tail end of a fat loss phase and, and hunger is high and, and calories are low, taking more chews per mouthful may help with adherence by providing more satiety. Food variation. This one, you, you can come at it from a couple of angles. So, like, there's benefits from consuming uh, quite a varied diet, and, and those benefits include reducing the likelihood of nutritional deficiencies um, because you're basically consuming um, a, a highly varied intake of different food sources with different macro and micronutrient profiles. Uh, we also know that consuming a highly varied uh, diet can be linked with improved gut, uh, gut health or, or gut bacterial diversity. But there are also downsides to, to con consuming um, a very varied diet. Um, some of these include that your, uh, this is more for those for physique athletes, uh, it can mean that sort of monitoring your day-to-day -day weight movements becomes a lot less predictable and therefore that makes it harder to make 
accurate calorie or dietary adjustments um, when they're required. But there's also a downside that, that applies specifically to um, fat loss phases, which I wanna discuss. So again, 2011, 2011 was the year for satiety studies, clearly. Um, so all participants were allowed to eat as much macaroni and cheese as they desired. One group attended the mac and cheese session once per week for five weeks, and they were called the weekly group. Whereas the other group attended the session five times per week for one week, and they were, they were called the daily group. In the daily group, participants ate the most during the first session, and then intake progressively decreased each day after that. But in the weekly group, who just came in once per week, the amount that they ate each session was pretty much mostly the same. So what, did, what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that it's probably smart to reduce the variation in your diet or even adopt a meal plan during a cut as you'll be less likely to overeat. And people clearly eat less of a food when they have it a lot. So I don't think you need to keep a, a low food variation all year long um, uh, because obviously you're gonna be missing out on those benefits we talked about at the top. But on a 12, 15, 16 week fat loss phase, um, I think it's just gonna take a load off um, your struggles with managing hunger if you keep to quite a short list of regular foods that you consume day in, day out. Food palatability, so how nice um, our food tastes. Uh, in, and and this, this is sort of ties in nicely with what I was talking about with the flexible dieters. Um, they are notorious for fitting in um, lots of nice tasting uh, treat or, or, or junk style foods. Um, and again, this looks really cool on Instagram and, and from people looking at the outside, they might think that um, the, the diet looks really easy because they're fitting in all these foods um, that taste really nice. But the nicer your diet is, um, it, it, which is sort of ironic, the, the nicer your diet is can actually make, make it um, even more difficult to stick to as, as I'll show um, in this study. So they provided the participants with their favorite food and told they could eat as much as they wanted, but just in five minutes. Then in a second testing session about a week later, they were provided with the same calories and macros that they consumed during that pleasurable feeding session, but this time it was served up in the form of a non-pleasurable blend of bread, milk, and butter. Now, this is where things get kind of a bit wacky, um, and this is where uh, it's sort of my head starts to spin a little bit. So ghrelin, our hunger hormone, was higher so we were more hungry, and CKK, which is our, one of our satiety hormones, was lower during the pleasurable feeding session. So what this is telling us is that when we had the really nice tasting foods, afterwards um, and during, we were hungrier and less satiated, but it wasn't just a psychological thing. It wasn't just like, oh, this food tastes so good, I wanna eat more of it. This is actually going on on a hormonal level. So the impacts of how nice our food tastes actually has the ability to impact our hunger hormones. So the practical application of this, uh, during a cut, it is smart to stick to the less palatable foods because it's gonna be less likely that you will overeat them. Um, and, and some derivatives of that, um, and, and this is sort of blown up in the last, I guess, five years, um, on the back of the flexible dieting and if it fits your macros plan, um, you probably wanna stay away or, or limit the low calorie sweeteners or the Walden Farms or the, the 18 ingredient protein pancake creations because although you might think, okay, this is gonna make my meals taste a lot nicer with minimal less calories, it's probably going to make your diet even harder to stick to in the long term just because your hunger becomes more difficult to manage uh, based on the fact that when the foods taste really nice, our, our hunger hormones are gonna spike and our satiety hormones are gonna be lower. Hey guys, Martin here from JPS and unfortunately that's all we have time for today. 
This was a snippet from a Hunger Hacks lecture, which is part of our education portal. If you want to know more about the portal, see the description below and stay tuned for next week's video.